Welcome to Cultivating Conversations, where we have tough and thought-provoking conversations about life, love, the pursuit of happiness, and everything in between. I am your host, Stacey T, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 3. So this particular episode was another week in review, and we discussed faith during the coronavirus pandemic and how fear affects us. I gave some great tips on how to not get stuck in the mundane everyday routine, which could lead to depression. I think this episode will be very encouraging to you. There's also some nuggets from a singles virtual chat and chill. So check it out. Leave a comment, like, share, and enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to have up-to-date information about when season two kicks off. As always, thanks for stopping by CCTV and enjoy. And this podcast is brought to you by We Out. Because when this thing is over, we are out. Like, I think everybody's going to be out on the street. I think that we're going to look like the scene from um, The Wiz. And um, can feel a brand new day like i think like we're gonna do that on the street like everywhere um it's just gonna be fabulous because it's this is crazy it's been a rough week it's been a rough rough week but we made it through glory we made it through another week welcome to cultivating combat because sometimes there's a lot of conversations that we want to have things that we want to talk about and we don't necessarily have the safe space. So, hey, Nicole. <laughs> hey, Nicole. Hey, Nikki. And hey, Sandy. Okay. All right. I think there's so many people jumping on. Maybe 8 o'clock is like, oh, 9 o'clock is the hot spot time. Um, I just had to reconnect. So, I'm just going to keep going. And whosoever will, will come on in. So the week in review. So again, this week, I went to a couple of places uh, for church. Um, I first went to Texas. Then I went back to Chicago. I went to Maryland. And then I came back to the Bronx. So I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what I got out of the words that I have been receiving this week. And I hope that you took the time out to peruse the internet. There's so many people... Um, preaching a lot of churches have switched to online platforms and everything which is great so i hope that you are really really taking advantage of the live streaming and also the rebroadcasting of things i know during the week i'm listening to words um during the week whether it's the same word that i i heard before or another service a different service it's very very important that we Fill our spirits and our souls with the word and with positivity because as we have seen during the last few weeks, um, there's nothing but bad news everywhere. The numbers are going up. Um, the number of deaths are going up. It's getting closer to our homes. But the word of God, the infallible word of God will never, ever go down. Hey. <laughs> so... Week in review the word. So Bishop T.D. Jakes, um, his sermon was called Strange Tears. And he was talking about, um, he came from John eleven thirty five, 35, which is the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And he was talking about how Jesus wept after Lazarus passed away. And, um, you know, we've heard this, we've heard preachers talk about this a lot. But one thing that Bishop T.D. Jakes is really, really driving home, which is great, is just the humanity of us, of, of humans. You know, yes, you know, we are in the world, but not of it. And we believe the word and we're blood washed and the blood is on the doorpost and we're covered in all of that. But if we can be honest, and I talked about this last week, um, this hurts. It's a lot going on. It's a lot. We've never experienced this ever. We probably never thought that we would. Um, this looks like a really like bad dream. As I was talking with somebody today, it looks like a movie, something that you would see in a movie. And there has been movies in the past that has um, alluded to stuff like this, which is pretty scary. But one of the things that Bishop T.D. Jake said was, 
I don't need you to tell me how to act when God answers my prayers. But I need you to tell me how to act when he doesn't. And I think a lot of times in church, we always talk about, you know, or often, I won't say always, we often talk about, you know, we believe in God to answer prayers, answer prayers, answer prayers, and we put a praise on it in all of this. But what happens when he doesn't? You know, and in that in that passage of scripture, you know, Mary and Martha was waiting for Jesus to come because Lazarus was dying and he died. He died. He died and he was dead for a couple of days before Jesus came. And, you know, sometimes in our lives, you know, things die. Like even this week, like how many of us have been praying from the inception of this thing for, you know, God to just blow this thing in another direction, you know, for him to just like, for everything to just go back to normal quick. And the more we pray, it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened. Um, and we're yet praying and some people are losing hope, you know, and a lot of times in our lives, we, we, if we, if we're honest, we to happen and they didn't. And then there realized the question with a lot of people and perhaps sometimes a lot of people left church because of this. Like if Jesus loved me, if he loves me and if I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do and if I'm praying the way that you told me to pray and if I'm fasting and sowing and doing this that, and the third, why hasn't he answered my prayers? So Bishop Jakes goes on to say that your tears are not an indictment on your faith. And he really touched on what happens we are when you are angry with God. Like how many people are angry with God right now? How many people just just not understanding, particularly those people who have lost ones? How many people are scratching their head with without answers? Like I just don't understand what is happening. But one of the things that Bishop really stuck with me is that he said Jesus wants you to take him to the spot where it stinks. He wants you to take him, Jesus wants you to take him to the spot where you gave up. And a lot of people are looking hopeless now. They're feeling hopeless. They just don't know where to turn. And a lot of people, particularly probably in the church, are afraid too. And we had talked about this last week, you know, even the things that we hadn't dealt with before this pandemic took place. And one of the reasons why I believe, you know, God is allowing this thing to happen because he wants us to be frank and honest with ourselves and take him to those places that hurt, those places that stink, those things that, you know, we've given up on. You know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, dreams deferred and things that we sat on, businesses and books that we're supposed to write and so on and so forth. And those are dead things. And, and he's saying, he said in his sermon, or what I took out of it is take me to those things that are dead. They had to take him. Jesus said, show me where you laid him. Show me where you laid Lazarus. They thought that it was over. But Jesus said, show me where you laid Lazarus. And Jesus is saying, show me where you laid your loved one. Show me where the puddle of tears are because you lost a co-worker or a friend or a friend of a friend or a family member that's close to you. You may have lost your job. Show me where that is. Whether you know God and if you don't, I invite you and I hope that you pray the prayer and speak to God in your own way to invite him into your heart. But even if you do know him, show him those places. Let him know how you're feeling. That's the whole purpose of him. That's the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit. So that's what I got out of T.D. Jakes. And I want you to chime in because I'm going to read your comments when I'm when I'm finished with this segment. So um, Nicole said I was there too with Bishop Jakes. Wasn't that a good sermon? Like it was, and that's one of the things that I love about Bishop Jakes and I really commend him. And I've said this to people that, you know, he's not afraid to talk about his days of small. And in a day and age where with this preaching thing and this ministry thing, everyone is trying to, you know, get big quick and get a name and get a platform and get a lot of likes and get this and the third. And you look at somebody like Bishop Jakes who looks like he has everything. You know, nearly all of his family is in ministry. He has this great church. He's like the, the pastor of the entire nation now. There are um, rules outlets that are 
coming to him to pray for the nation on live TV, which hardly ever happens. And it probably would not have happened unless we was all in this pandemic, you know, kind of desperate together. And, you know, he's not afraid to talk about how he used to preach to 20 people, like his church had like 50 people for like 20 years. You know, and how like the floorboard in his car was 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 worn out and he used to, his wife, you know, the, the incomparable lady Sarita Jakes would wash out his one suit that he had every time he had to preach until the lining wore, you could tell I really listened to him, the lining in his suit wore out. So, he under he has the balance and he knows how to go from preaching from millions of people to just nobody in the sanctuary. And you know, that's we respect him and, and I like how he gives balanced truth. He doesn't give a cookie cutter fantasy gospel. He lets us know that it's okay to cry. It's okay to weep. It's okay to ask God questions. It's it's okay to tell God how, how you're feeling, the raw emotions, but just don't stay there. And that's why I really, really appreciate him. So I left Texas and I went to the Bronx, to my church, Morning Star for Gospel Assembly, where my pastor is the senior pastor, Ruben Spinner. In, and the church is located at 464 East Tremont Avenue in case you want to visit once this thing is over. Okay. So the archives and there's a series that he did um, in spring of last year called The Great Comeback. The absolute favorite series he ever done in my, for me. Um, so this past Sunday, his, um, the, uh, Topic was the lion won't devour me. And the points that he made was the enemy uses people to roar his threats, but a roar itself can do nothing. And I want to park right there. And I'm not trying to like re preach my beloved pastor's sermon. I, I, these, he's very strategic and intentional with the sermons that he chooses because he wants to choose something that's going to be relatable to the times that we live in. So what I took out of this is the enemy. You know, like I said, I do not believe that God caused this pandemic to happen. You know, this is something that was in the place of hell, you know, and those that he uses, you know, but if we look at the TV, if we look at television, if we look at social media, what is happening? The enemy is using people to roar his threats. You know, everybody's going to die. You're going to catch it. You're going to, everyone is going to go into the hospital. Like once you catch it, it's over for you. That's it. That is the roar. That is what is being perpetuated. They're not showing, um, the, you know, how many people are recovering. They're kind of, you have to catch it. It's very rare. They're not showing the people that are recovering. They're not showing, you know, um, you know, what's happening so much in the other countries. They're, they're not showing the good things, you know, and, and I believe that in some instance, they're not doing that partly because people are not listening and they're still going out and they're still, still doing things. So maybe the media feels that if they share all of the good stuff, people are going to continue to say, see, this is just like the flu. It's okay. You know, but the other part of it is fear drives propaganda and we want people to be in alarm. That's why there is no toilet tissue still in the stores. That's why the lines for um, BJ's and Costco are like 200 miles long. Okay, not 200 miles. I'm being um, dramatic. They're, they're, they're quite long, you know, because people are in panic mode. You know, so my pastor was saying that, you know, God, the enemy uses people to raw his threats, but a raw itself can do nothing. So even though we're watching what's on TV, they're just words. They, I'm not negating the facts, the facts, but we have to learn how to discern the facts from the truth of what is really happening and the truth that is in the word of God. OK, and one of the other things that my pastor said was there's always a shift when it's time to grow. I feel like this is one of the most defining times in history. It's definitely one of the most defining 
times of in, in the Bible. You know, the Bible is literally coming to life. And anytime, and we know this individually, anytime they're they're going to go to another level, there's always something that happens, you know, to try to pull us back or to or to push us forward. And I believe that what is happening, you know, while there are a lot of people dying and there's a lot of bad things out of it there's also going to be a lot of good things that come out of it so that is from my pastor so then i left the bronx and i went to chicago to anwar all nations worship assembly with apostle matthew stevenson excuse me and his points were the days we're living in are moments of divine opportunity and we can take that a couple of ways, you know, divine opportunity again for the books and the businesses and the ministries and all of those things that's going to be birthed. But it's also divine opportunity to um, make relationships right. You know, pick up that phone and call somebody that you haven't spoken to in a while and have a conversation, um, you know do some self searching like this is the divine opportunity for us to really really for real press the reset button the other thing he said was we have to choose to believe preach and pray what the bible says so what i got out of that was monitor your confession monitor what your confessions it's so important that you monitor your confessions and you know a lot of times we're on the phone we're talking to people and we are um we are we are mimicking you know we are being like a parrot with what the news is saying again not negating what it's truth but a lot of things that we're saying is not true. A lot of things we're saying is coming out of emotion. Now, again, going back to what Bishop T.D. Jake said, there's nothing wrong with that when you're talking to the Lord. But, you know, any any preacher would tell you it's OK, but don't stay there. And a lot of times we will spiral ourselves down into this rabbit hole of depression, not so much because of what we hear on the news, but because of what we are repeating. So anytime we're talking about what is happening, when we choose to talk about what is happening, we always, we, it is imperative that we speak opposite of what we are saying. Yeah, there, there's, there's a hundred thousand people that have died, but you know what? There are 80,000 people that left the hospital. God is still in the miracle working business. He is still healing. He is still sending people home. We we have to be very careful with what we say. And anytime we talk about, you know, the truth, you know, my bishop used to talk about, you know, we hold the facts up to the truth. They may be facts. They may actually be facts. But the truth of the matter is, is that we're going to come through this. They have been plagues in the Bible and, and, and people have survived them. We are going to survive them, but it all matters with what comes out of your mouth. The other thing Apostle Matthew Stevenson said, another point was, we can't afford to allow the enemy to cause us to mismanage the power we have in our mouths by repeating what's coming through the media. And that's basically what I, what I said. He said, confession creates reality so even though all of this stuff is happening even though we cannot leave our houses even though you know it's 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 kind of daunting to leave our house like i left my house this morning to go to the post office and i felt like i was going to fight the battle of armageddon like i look like a, a ninja some samurai like wrestler crazy karate person because i had all of this stuff on and when i came home i had to take all of that stuff off but my confession when I came into my house was, this is my sanctuary. Everything is happening in the world. Everything is going on. I cannot control what goes on outside. I don't know how many people, um, you know, cough and sneeze. I can't control. I can't control any of that. But I can control what happens in my house. I can control how I'm, how I'm feeling in my house. I can control how much news I'm watching. I can control, you know, how much I'm going to have the news blaring or I'm going to turn on some worship music or some praise music or I'm going to, you know, sign into DJ D nice quarantine party and all of that stuff. Like I control my environment. And that also goes into what I say because words take form. 
and they create atmospheres. Okay? So that was what I got from Chicago. Then I went to Pastor Joanne Brown and with Ebenezer, which I am so sad that we are not going to be at the retreat this year, but she preached, Lord, pull us through, coming from Daniel 6. And one, the one thing that I want to leave with you is she said, we will prosper and come out of this better. And I think that going back to what I was speaking about with Apostle Matthew Stevenson, with monitoring your confessions, I think that that is what we have to continue to say. I will come through this better. Whether it's a business, whether it's a book, whether it's I'm sane and I made it through with my right mind. Because everybody is not going to build a business. You know, everyone is not going to be doing those things. Everyone is not going to start a ministry. But what are, you, what are you going to do with what you have control over? What do you believe that God is going to pull you through and push you into? Pastor Joanne didn't say that. I said, she said that he's going to pull us through. But I'm asking you, what is he going to pull you through and push you into? What is going to happen on the other side of this? What are you going to do with the rest of 2020? Because I believe and I, I decree and declare that this is not going to last all 2020. This is not going to last half of the year. I'm, I'm, I'm truly, I'm truly praying and believing God for that. That by May, by the end of April, we would have gone through this curve. Things would have subsided and we would slowly start getting back into civilization. And by mid-May, when it gets really nice and, and the flowers are truly budding and the weather is getting warmer, that we can kind of like pick up life again. Once we pick up life again, what is that going to look like for you? What is that going to look like for us? Okay, let me read these comments. Nikki said, I like your shirt, sissy. Because let me tell you something. You know what? I think I might wear this shirt every Friday. I might wear this shirt every Friday to remind y'all we out. We are out. When this is over, we out. Whether it's leaving your house, whether it's leaving the, 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 the bad relationships, the bad attitudes, we out. We, we out of stinking thinking. We out of not doing what we're supposed to do for the Lord. We out. I feel that. We out. We out. So whatever we out means to you. I mean, we out means to me. I'm going to get my passport. And I'm literally, literally out. Like, if I don't go on somebody's beach and get my melanin on. So I'm out physically as well. But there's a lot of other things that I need to be out from. Um... Darlene said, yes, I started my day with gospel music instead of the news. What a difference it made how I felt all day. Amen. And I know Nikki didn't say this, but I was talking to Nikki and Nikki said something very, very profound. She was in her home and it was just really, really like dark because the shades were down. And just a matter of opening up her curtains and letting the sun in made such a big difference so even though we can't go outside like as soon as i get up in the morning i go to the bathroom i brush my teeth and i go into the living room and into the kitchen and i lift up all the shades even if it's not sunny outside i just want to see outside Okay, I, I happen to like my environment when I look out my window. I just want to see outside. I have some plants. I'm growing some vegetables. I don't know how that's going to go. I'll let y'all know, but because I don't have a green thumb. But I, I, I'm, no, I do have one. I'm going to monitor my confessions. I'm going to have a whole garden. How about that? Anyway, um, um, yeah, so when, when it's sunny, then that makes it even better. Naya, I love you too, boo. I love you too. And I remember our time. Christmas last year. We had so much fun in Orlando. Okay. So my question for you now is what word have you received this week that encouraged you? I want to hear from you. I want to hear where, where you went. I want to hear um, what, 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 what church did you go to? Um, what word did you receive? I want to hear that. And while we do that, I am going to take a commercial break. 
So this is the time where I commercialize, advertise a business. So now that I see that Cheryl Raglan has joined, I'm going to shout out her business. So Cheryl Raglan wrote a book called Go For It. And the book is basically about going for your dreams, going for the things that you want to do and letting nothing stop you. So if you want to do some reading, if you want to, um, you know, try to figure out what life is going to look like for you outside of this, Cheryl, if you can um, put your link to your website, your handles on where they can get your book, then that would be great. The commercial is over. Now, we are going to get back. <laughs> so, week in review. So, this is building our community. So, what happened this week? So, one thing that I really want to talk about that I just found out today. Jay-Z and Meek Mill's prison, their criminal justice organization. Jay-Z and Meek Mill have a criminal justice organization. And if any of you have been following them, Meek Mill was locked up for a while. He's a rapper, I believe out of Philly. He was locked up for a while on some chumped up charges from um, a judge that was really shady. Um, so from that, he had like some kind of awakening and him and Jay-Z partnered together and they created this criminal justice organization. And I believe they like help offenders especially those that you know are kind of like going through the ring or through the justice system he helps they help them um like get get the help that they need you know with their cases and stuff well they sent a hundred thousand masks to prisons okay so fifty thousand masks went to rikers island forty thousand went to tennessee department of corrections and five thousand went to mississippi state penitentiary in parchment i guess parchment tennessee um i'm especially happy because my children's father works for rikers he's a correction officer and i got a chance to talk to him this week and you know it, it was it was it was it was a conversation to be had because they really don't have anything. So shout out to Jay-Z and Meek Mill. Last week I was talking about Rihanna and how she sent a lot of PPE um, things to P PPE equipment to Governor Cuomo from her foundation. And this week, Jay-Z and Meek Mill did. So also this week, DJ Cadden had a concert on Saturday. DJ D Nice was on his set again, just coming for everybody on IG. Hey, Steph, <laughs> coming for everybody on IG. DJ Dex came on again and he did his virtual praise party on IG and Facebook. And interestingly, Pastor Jamal Bryant decided to get in on it and he had a basement party. So any of y'all who act like, or who, who don't act like y'all wasn't out the womb save, y'all know what basement parties are. But it was literally in his basement. Like, it wasn't like that, but we know where the term, term comes from. But he had a basement party, and um, I didn't watch, I didn't watch it, I saw it after. But I remember him, when I watched it um, quickly, he kept prefacing that, this wasn't this that particular segment was not for the what's the word that he used it wasn't for the super saints the deep saints it wasn't for them and he played r&b he played hip-hop um he played old school and um i believe there was over a hundred thousand people that came on ig live on his set and to his account, he said that there were people that inboxed him because he did offer salvation. He offered salvation while the DJ was playing. And there were people that reached out to him because one, we're in a pandemic. Two, people are looking for answers. And so people were reaching out to him, wanting to know more about Christ. So my question to you is, what do you think about a, about a pastor pushing 
this type of, I don't want to use the word agenda, but what do you think about pastor throwing a party like this for secular music? Like what, what, what do you think? Um, you know, pastors have been, you know, preaching and singing and doing concerts and things like this, but this was like the only pastor to really do something like this. So I, I want to hear from you all and, and, and hear, um, and read, what do you think? Um, I think that, I do think that it's innovative. I think that it's innovative. I think that, you know, for us to win souls, you know, the word says that he that wins souls is wise. So, um, there may be a lot of people that do not agree, you know, and if it's not your cup of tea, then that's fine. But, you know, he has been preaching, he has been going and, um, you know, he had like a whole crusade of different pastors, had like a, a, a coronavirus a revival kind of thing. And then he decided to reach out to um, those who are not churched, you know, those who, you know, probably wouldn't normally pull up to a weekday message, but, you know, pull up on a Sunday. He decided to have a DJ spin some R&B and, um, and he had a party and he's a whole pastor. So I'm just wondering, you know, what you all feel about that. You know, I, I'm hoping that at the end of this, that, you know, us as a, as a church, we don't start like going back and start like picking who did what kind of thing. Um, this is the new digital age. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are changing. Um, I think that because, you, you know, we always talk about the church and how, you know, the church, you know, has been like these four wall, these four walls that people cannot get in unless, you know, you have this whole long criteria of rules and regulations and things to do. And, you know, I think that this is a way because a lot of these people wouldn't necessarily come to church, you know, but now they're looking for the church. So the only way they're going to see is what they see on, you know, social media because they cannot physically walk into a church. So I think that it's a good way to show the balance um, for people to see, to let them know that people that go to church, preachers and pastors are not robots. You know, we, you know, we like to have fun too. Now what that fun looks like is different for everybody. And I'm not talking about the type of fun that, that, that is sinful, you know, so, you know, I think it was innovative with what, you know, what uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant did. So, the other thing that happened this week was, and I talked about this last week with um, something called the Quarantine Connection. And talking about people who are um, single and, you know, what that, what dating looks like or what it don't look like. Because it really don't look like nothing right about now. Depending on who you are. It doesn't really look like anybody is dating now because can't nobody go on dates. Like nobody can really do much of anything. So I saw this video that tagged me in this week. And there was a guy who saw this girl across the street in another building on her roof exercising. He was on his balcony. Now for the saints, before I even go any further, because when I was writing my notes, I thought about David and Bathsheba. This is not a David and Bathsheba moment. Okay. <laughs> before y'all start rebuking this, this is really like a really good story. Um, but it, it does kind of like on the onset sound like David and Bathsheba, but it's not that. So this guy sees this girl dancing or exercising on the roof and he decides to write her a note and sends his number. He writes her a note, put his number, put it on a drone and flew the drone across the street in the air to where she was on the roof of her building. I don't know how many days went by, but they ended up connecting and talking and they decided to go on their first date. Their first date, for their first date, he set a table on his on his um, balcony, she sat a table on her roof and they had the table cover, they had, you know, their drink, they had their lunch and they FaceTimed each other. 
So then this guy decides that he wants to take this this thing to another level. Your boy gets a whole bubble. I don't, now don't ask me where he got where he got the drone from the, the the drone. He gets into a bubble. He sits on the floor. He first he goes and gets some flowers. He sits in the bubble with the flowers. Blows himself. Blows the bubble up with him inside of it. Walks with the bubble across the street to give the girl the flowers because we have the six feet six you know the distancing the social distancing for six feet and i thought that that was the most innovative thing like it really goes to show that when you really want something and you're really serious about something you will make it happen i was absolutely mesmerized nicole said yes he has he has the bubble I need. Nicole needs the bubble. I think everybody needs that bubble. Everybody wants that bubble, but I can see people getting tangled up in it. I don't even know how he got out of it, but he ended up getting out of it and giving the girl these flowers, okay? So, this leads me to this virtual, this is all going to come together, this virtual chat and chill. So, I told you last week that the same Pastor Jamal Bryant was having a virtual chat and chill for singles, which I thought was so great because a lot of people you know there are people that are married so if you're married you know you have your spouse that you can netflix and chill and kick it with and do all of that stuff you know if you have children you know they will you know occupy your time you know with their craziness because they're home all day and you're home with them um but if you desire a relationship you know it can be a trying time for you and if you are single and by yourself it can really really be um a really really trying time for you and um there's there's not a lot of things for singles to do especially if you're by yourself and i know that that's been the basis of a lot of prayers for people and that's been one of my prayers really praying for singles especially who are alone um i thank god that i'm strong enough to pray that prayer because i'm quite far removed from um let me watch my let me watch what i say because i don't want to get any threatening text messages from those i've had these conversations with i can stand in the gap for those who desire a relationship because i'm not quite there i think that was safe enough so pastor jamal bryant has this virtual chat and chill okay and it's it wasn't the type of chat and chill that you would think like as soon as i was telling people they was like come on quarantine bay and thought that i was gonna get hooked up and all of this stuff it wasn't like that it wasn't like an open room like a, a speed dating for people that are quarantined and single and want a relationship it was not like that um pastor jamal bryant and the singles pastor carly turner um they had a whole segment that lasted like an hour and a half where they talked about being single and being single during this time. So there's a quite a few things that um, he shared that I want to share with you that hopefully we can have a conversation about. You know, I will definitely add this to one of my podcast episodes when I start my podcast um, once all of this is over. But I wanted to give us things to think about, especially if we are in ministry, especially if we are married, um, especially if we are pastors and preachers, um, I think that it, this is the time to really have the conversation or start the conversation. So Pastor Jamal Bryan said that the church has failed the single community. That was the first thing he said. The church and the church at large has failed the single community. He said that the black church has created an overwhelming reality of family and being married while most of the church is single divorced or it's complicated if you are typing in um comments i cannot see them that's why i haven't repeated your comments so i'm really sorry i, I don't know if it's freezing if like the whole earth is on face um book live but it's it's kind of like going slow so forgive me if i don't get to your comments um before this is over so he also said 
Pastor Jamal Bryan said, we have generations of over-prepared wives and under-prepared husbands. I'm going to say that again. We have generations of over-prepared wives and under-prepared husbands. How many times have we heard Proverbs 31 recited when it comes to a woman that's waiting to be a wife? How many times have we heard about women keeping themselves and, you know, just doing what they need to do, learning how to cook and clean and, and be the help need and the neck that turns the head and all of that stuff. How many times have we heard that and not so much what the husband is supposed to do, what the man is supposed to do being a husband with him being the lead and loving um, the church, loving, loving his wife as Christ loved the church. What he also said was we, this he blew my mind with this. Pastor Jamal Bryan said, we have taught sexual purity to 46-year-olds the same way we do 16-year-olds. We have taught sexual purity to 46-year-olds the same way we do to 16-year-olds. And I really had to think about that because I said, when we talk about saving yourself from marriage and, you know, um, being pure for your husband and things like that, it's just a blanket statement. So you have the 16 year old who doesn't know about sex, you know, who doesn't know about, you know, all of those things or, that, or that's learning about it. You have the 25 year old who has been open to it whether it be conversations you know relationships that she got close to or actually you know went all the way but then you also have 40 year olds they are i mean they have the movie called 40 year old virgin but there are 40 year olds that are virgins there are 40 year olds that are celibate which is different from being a virgin there are 40 and 50 year olds that have kept themselves that are now going through menopause. And for what I hear with menopause, all of your emotions are like throw them up in the air and they just splat to the ground and it's, it's just crazy. So how do you talk to each of these phases, these women are phase, in these phases of life that's going through these, these real situations in their bodies and tell them all the same thing. So I think the purpose that he was getting at, Pastor Jamal Bryant was getting at, is that one of the things that he said is that we have to have gospel for grown-ups. And he was talking about how in the church there are conversations that we just don't have. We just don't have them because we don't know how to have them. So just like you have the person who, you know, is... Um, you know, we haven't had those conversations about sex. You have married couples that the women, especially if they grew up in church, they were so drilled and ingrained about how nasty sex is and, 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 and all of the bad things about it that they get married and they can't turn that off. So now you have this married couple that has all of the right to get in where they fit in and now there's a whole other problem in this marriage, not because they, they, this is not a couple that is fornicating that's not married. This is a couple that has every right to enjoy one another and they can't because the woman is bound. I don't know if there's ever a man that would be bound from that. Like, I don't want to have sex because I don't, I, don't, I don't think such would exist. But for women, it does. So now you have this woman that doesn't know how to navigate through that because there wasn't honest conversations in the church. Again, I'm talking about the church at large. This is not an indictment to any particular church. This is the church at large. You know, there might be, you know, ministries that are having these conversations, but in the grand scheme of things, um, it's not really happening. Um, there, there were also conversations that they talked about things like, Masturbation. Breathe in, breathe out. 
I told you that this was going to be cultivated conversations and we was going to talk about stuff. Now, I'm not talking about it. I'm not going to talk about it. But I'm telling you that they talked about it. And what I will say is that because Pastor Carby trying to ask him about that because somebody so they had this chat on the side and people was giving their comments and asking questions so she was taking some of the questions and one of the questions that somebody asked was is masturbation a sin so the way that he answered it was he said that there are three ways that we sin in word thought and deed and I'm paraphrasing what he's saying this is not verbatim but this is I'm paraphrasing what I heard him say so he said that we sin in three ways word thought and deed and a lot of times we think about the deed part, but we don't focus on the thought part, not realizing that every deed that we did starts with the thought. So if every deed that we do starts with the thought, when you are partaking in that, it starts with the thought, which is fantasizing. It turns into idolatry. So in a nutshell, he was saying, yes, he was saying, yes, it's a sin. But my point is, is that these were the conversations that they had. And, you know, there were people chiming in on the side like, oh, you just freed me. I don't want to go to hell like during this quarantine and Jesus come back because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. You know, I was laughing, but it was conversations that, you know, that was had like real adult conversations. So he's going to have two more chat and chills. He didn't give the dates yet. Um, but the second one, the second virtual chat and chill, he is going to do on soul ties. So I think that's going to be a really, really good one. He's going to dedicate the entire virtual chat and chill on soul ties. And then the third one he's going to do is on social media dating. And I think he's going to talk about the do's and don'ts. Um, one of the other things that he talked about was... How like with being single now is the time to kind of like weed out who you may be interested in because and I alluded to this last week like there's not um, there's not much we can do now like a lot of times with dating you know it's the fluff it's the let's go out let's go to the movies let's go out to eat let's do this let's, let's go do that and, da -da 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 -da. and now we don't have anything else to do but to talk and a lot of times we well. I'm not going to even say a lot of times in these days, we have lost the art of conversation. We have lost the art of actually picking up the phone and hearing somebody's voice and talking, not texting or being, you know, sending messages on IG or Facebook or wherever else talking. So now you can find out a lot about a person by talking to them. And Pastor Jamal said, like, you, you can ask the person questions like, you know, like, like a, a woman can ask the man, like, have you heard from your parents? Like, you know, how are your parents doing? That will kind of tell you, you know, how a man treats his mother, which is very, um, which is very telling of how he would treat you with how he treats his mother, how he treats his parents. You know, if they have kids, you know, you know, how are the kids doing in school? Like there's questions that you can ask. If this person can't have a conversation, then there's no conversation to really be had. You know, we're doing a lot of praying now. So, you know, when we finish talking, can you close us out in a word of prayer? Because we have to go to sleep. We probably went outside during the day. We want to make sure we're covered. Can you pray? If the person can't pray, then that's telling you a lot. Rather than all of the smoke and mirrors and the biceps and triceps and the hips and, you know, the stilettos and going out and doing all of this stuff that's fluff and not getting to the core of who a person is. This is the time to get to the core of who a person is. Okay, so Amanda said, please let me know when the soul ties one happens. I will let you know. I will try my best. So this is the thing. This is not a Facebook live thing that they do. They do it on Zoom. At least they did it the first time. They did it on Zoom. So what happens is you have to go to the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church website and you have to register once you register, you get a confirmation with the link in an email. And then at the appointed time, you click the link, you get into the Zoom. But here's the thing. 
I got on at like 8.04 because I don't like to be late for nothing. So I got on at 8.04 and I was one of the earliest, the earlier people to get on. They hadn't even started yet. So when it started, I was on the first page with both pastors and a couple of other people and like the moderator. Um, by the end of the virtual chat and chill, there were 700 people waiting in the queue to get on. So I guess if you jumped off or hopped off or whatever, um, and somebody was waiting, they would probably get in. When it started, it was 100 people waiting. By the time it was over, it was 700 people. So you're going to have to definitely, um, you're going to have to definitely um, look out for it. Definitely, as soon as you find out about it. So I found out about it because I follow um, Pastor Jamal Bryant and New Birth on Instagram. So I saw the advertisement when it came up on IG. And so I went on and I went immediately and registered because I know that they're a big church and he's like an internet pastor pretty much like even before this. So I figured a lot of people was going to be chiming in. So I'll let you know um, as soon as we have it. Okay. What time is it? What is happening this week? Let me see what time it is. Oh, 9.53. Okay, I got seven minutes. Okay. Um. So what's happening this week? And D-Nice is going to do his club quarantine again at 4 p.m. on IG Live. DJ Dex is doing his virtual praise party again this weekend. I think it starts at 7. And he's going to be on IG Live and Facebook Live. Um, my church, Morning Star for Gospel Assembly, located at 464 East Tremont Avenue in the Bronx, New York. We are having a week of fasting and praying for the nation. So from Sunday, starting Sunday, we are going to be fasting from Sunday to Sunday, from sunup to sundown. And every night from Sunday to, sun Sunday, to Sunday at 7, between 7 and 7.30, we are going to have a prayer call. Every night, Sunday to Sunday. So I've shared um, the, the flyer on my social media handles. I will share it again. It's open to whomsoever will. Um, the ecclesiastical staff, the ministers and the elders and the deacons are going to be praying um, at the conclusion of our fast, if you're fasting, or at the conclusion of sundown. Because we all know that once it gets dark and the nighttime comes, you know, I'm sure that it could be... Um, trying for a lot of people because a lot of people are dealing with anxiety and fear because this devil of a virus just does not seem to be going away so i have five minutes and i'm going to ask you a question and i'm going to end with a couple of minutes of um i can't think of the word why am i drawing a blank um a moment of of just a word just something, you know, of a moment of encouragement. So one of my questions for you is, and I talked about it earlier, is what are your goals for 2020? Don't let this virus stop you from looking at your vision board and revisiting it or your journal or whatever else you have going on and seeing what you have accomplished and have not. Don't let it stop you. If you breathe in and breathe out, that means you have breath. You're not on a ventilator. You're not in a hospital. You're, you're, you're not gone. You're here. So every day that we have is a day that we can take to do something. No matter how big, no matter how small. Nobody's saying that you have to find a cure for cancer or you have to write 15 books or do whatever. But whatever is on your vision board that you can do, even if it's revisiting what your plans were and seeing how that changed, do it. Plan for the year. Plan for what you're going to do coming out of this. Okay? So, my four minutes of um, my little encouragement. So, this Sunday is Palm Sunday. Sunday is Palm Sunday, and normally we would be flooding the church, remembering the event Jesus rode in on donkey, and they waved palms, and they cried Hosanna, and they did all of this great stuff, and we would get our palms, we would tie them up into nice 
decorations and make crosses out of them to commemorate what he did on the cross. We can't do that. We cannot do that. We, we cannot go to church this Sunday and dress in our pre-Easter best resurrection, get down outfits. We can't do that um, because we have social distancing. But we do have two palms. We may not have the palms that they waved to wave, but we have palms. We still have palms. So I hope that this weekend, if you cannot get yourself some palms, if you don't have access to them, that the two main palms that you have to clap with, to pick things up with, to pray with, that you would use those palms to worship and to wave and to give God praise because we have made it through another week and we are going to make it through the subsequent weeks and we're going to come out of this better, beautiful, and, and <laughs> Nicole said I'm still wearing my outfit. So are we going to have like a Palm Sunday brunch? Thing with our Sunday best, Nicole. We'll, we'll take that offline. Let me know, girl. But take the time out to wave the palms that you have. Because even though we can't get the palms that they waved, Jesus gave us <laughs> palms to wave and do other things with. So be safe. Practice social distancing. Pluck your eyebrows. Shave your legs. Wash your booty, even though you in the house. Brush your teeth, lay your edges, get some conditioner, give yourself a pedicure, light a candle, watch something funny, FaceTime your friends, call your loved ones, drink water, be safe, and keep yourself prayed up and monitor your conversations. Monitor your confessions. Monitor what goes into your ear gate and your eye gate. Pray for our youth. Pray for those who are in domestic violence situations. Pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Pray for those who are dealing with anxiety and fear, who are paralyzed. Pray for those who are our first responders, those who are delivering the mail, the Amazon packages, who are showing up to the grocery stores, the people that are pumping your gas. If you live in a state where they pump your gas, um, just, just, just everything, you know, if you're getting your lawns mowed and, and the leaves taken up, pray for those small businesses, support your small business. I didn't even do mine, but it's okay. It's here. I design beauty. Go to www.idesignbeauty.com. Okay. But most of all, stay safe. I love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Share, like. I'm going to read everybody's comments because only a couple came up. And I love you all. Happy Friday. Talk to you later. Peace.